God bless you kids. How are you doing? I hope that you guys are having a wonderful time spending some quality time at home with your parents and loved ones. This week we will continue with the story of Moses and the plans that God had for him. Today is a very beautiful story and it's about the burning bush. But before we begin, let's start with a prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for your unfailing love. Thank you for the word which gives us great comfort during these scary times. Thank you for never leaving us or forsaking us. Thank you for your security, God. Thank you for showing us to trust in you. Thank you for allowing us one more week to gather this way. Lord, may your spirit remove any distractions that will interfere with your word today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So the Bible storyline is Moses and the burning bush part 3. The big idea with God, nothing is impossible. Our key question is, who is God? God is our creator and our heavenly father. He created everything in the whole wide world. God is perfect and never makes any mistakes. God is love. He, his greatest act of love for us was giving his son Jesus to bear to be our savior Jesus Christ was punished and crucified on the cross for our sins yeah on the third day he resurrected or rose again Jesus is our mediator between God and us between God and us that's very important case Jesus was born to fulfill the prophecy Jesus lived to glorify God, one, by preaching, teaching, and revealing to us God's message around the world. Remember, we need to ask God in Jesus' name to forgive us for all our sins, mistakes, which are genuine repentance, regret, and with a sincere heart, kids. That's very important. So our memory verse today is in Exodus chapter 3, verse 14. God replies to Moses, I am who I am. Says this to the, say this to the people of Israel. I am has sent you. Let's summarize what we have learned so far about Moses' life. He was he was the son of Hebrew slaves, descendants of Jacob, Israel, and his 12 sons. Moses' mother hid him for 3 months so she so he wouldn't be killed by the Egyptian masters. Moses was found in the Nile River while the Pharaoh's daughter was bathing. He was adopted and raised by her. Moses learned the truth about his origin years after. Then he decided to visit his people when he sees an Egyptian master beating one of his fellow brothers. Moses defended the slave and during that struggle he ended up killing the Egyptian by mistake. Moses then runs away and hides from Pharaoh's men in the land of Midian. Moses settles in the land of Midian and married Zipporah, one of the seven sisters. Moses' life as a prince ended and his new one began as a shepherd. God spoke to Moses through a burning bush. God, can we, can we imagine how hard it must have been for Moses to live in the wilderness as a shepherd tending sheep. 
He had to learn to adapt to his new reality. God knew Moses was caring and a just man, but God also knew that he was not prepared yet to lead his people. Moses needed to not rely on his own strength and weaknesses. The same happens to us kids that prevents us to see God's mighty power. Then, 40 years later, one day he was tending his father-in-law's sheep near the mountain of God in Horeb. Moses noticed this a burning bush, but it wasn't burning. He decided to take a closer look when he hears God's voice that called upon his name. He stopped him and told him, take off your sandals because you are standing on holy ground. God speaks to us the same way as he did to Moses. If you hear God's voice, don't be afraid, kids. Stop and listen. That's very important. God said, I am the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and yours too. Moses was afraid and hid his face. God told Moses he had been seeing the affliction of his Israelites in Egypt and heard their cry. He also said to him, I have come down to rescue them from the hands of the Egyptians. God saw the pain and suffering of the Israelites the same way he sees our kids. Yes, he does. If we cry out to him the same way the children of Israel did, he will rescue us because he cares and loves for us so much. God told Moses, I will send you a, to Pharaoh so you may bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. But Moses said, who am I that I should go to the Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? So then God told Moses, I will be with you. This shall be a sign for you that I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will then worship me on the holy mountain. Moses asked God what he was supposed to say to the Israelites once he was in front of them. God told Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to them. I am has sent you. He is the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He has sent me to you. This is God's name forever and ever. The name we should call him from generation to generation. God instructed Moses to assemble all the elders and then let them know that his father, the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, has sent him to watch over them. He has seen what the Egyptians have done to the Israelites. He wanted the elders to go to know that God's plan and needed them to go with him to see Pharaoh and deliver the message. God knew Pharaohs would not willingly allow the Israelites to leave Egypt. So he he, his mighty hand intervened. God will strike the Egyptians until the Pharaoh will let them go. He also made sure that the Israelites will leave with silver and gold and clothing and not empty handed. The burning bush story in Exodus chapter 3 teaches us that God is a loving and caring father. Why? Because we are his children like Moses and the Israelites were. He wants us to know that he always hears and listens when we call upon his name. He also shows us that when he speaks to us, we need to stop and listen to his voice just like Moses did. God teaches us in the story that he's always with us. He needs us to count on him and no matter what happens to us or around us. God is pleased when we trust on him 
and he will guide our path. God wants us to know that he will provide for us. And he did as he did with the Israelites. Children, I want you to meditate, okay, on God's word. Seek him. Talk to him. Express how you're feeling. Spend some quality time with him, okay? This week, I want you to talk to God and stop and listen. God can choose different ways to speak to us. Remember, he uses, he used the burning bush for Moses. So then be on the lookout, okay? I want you to read this verse as and point out what God wants you to learn in Hebrews 11, verse 6. And it is impossible to please God without faith. And anyone who wants to come to Him must believe that God exists and that He rewards those who sincerely seek Him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for showing us how much you love and care for us. Thank you for sharing this beautiful story. I know that for the past weeks we've been faced with so many problems and worries. But I know that in the midst of this storm, we are so grateful that we're not alone. I hope that each of us will develop the fruits of the Spirit. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Kids, God is so beautiful. You know, He doesn't want us to worry. He wants us to have faith. Faith in Him. He's always with us. And you know that we can go through anything. But remember, always be joyful, grateful that He's always there right beside us, okay? Remember to always listen to your parents. Let them worry because they are older and they know how to take care of us, okay? But if you have any worry, just pray to God. You're entitled to worry too your children, you worry about your parents, about your loved ones, about your friends, but remember that God has your parents and your loved ones to care for you, so you're not alone, because when God loves us, He always makes sure that we have comfort, that we could depend on someone, the same way we could depend on Him. I love you and I miss you, and I pray each day for each and one of you guys. I pray that he will give you comfort and he will give you joy and happiness. And I pray for every single parent, for every single sister and brother of our church, for our parents, for our leaders, for our nurses, for our doctors, for everyone who's out there in front of the line giving up. And giving hope and, and helping those who are sick. Those who can't fend for themselves right now. That they depend on others to survive. But remember, we should always depend on God. I love you. I miss you. God bless you.